Welcome, friends. Episode 12 of the Note Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg, and today's topic, don't bleed before you're shot. So before I dive into this, shout out to my sister, Shirley. She found my podcast and messaged me this morning, and I'm going to have her on an upcoming episode. So I'm I'll be interested, especially for those of you who listen in rather than watch it on YouTube, to see if you can tell the difference between us because my sister is my voice twin. In the past, we have confused my husband severely (laughs) on the phone. And not only that, once we were, I think we're in Queensland. You'll have to let me know, Shirley, where we were. And somebody thought we were like legit twins And she was over the moon. I was highly offended because my sister's nearly 10 years older than me. So that is a whole story. I am so looking forward to her having on the show. And I really loved her feedback. She said that this is the happiest she's seen me. So this makes me happy as well. And for anyone in business, entrepreneur, wannapreneur, wherever you are in your business journey, find something that lights you up and follow that, even if it doesn't make any logical sense, because when you are loving what you do, it, it just comes out in all ways. Anyway, the topic, don't bleed before you're shot. This statement is a shout out to Heather Tobin. If you don't follow her, her Instagram is the Heather Tobin. And I can't remember the context of it, but we're having a discussion one day and I was worried about something. Um, as we are, you know, you find a lump or a bump or you need some tests and you're told, you know, come back. And I remember I was quite concerned and Heather wisely said to me, don't bleed before you're shot. And that statement floored me because how often do we waste so much energy worrying? What if, what if this lump or bump is something bad? What if when you get that email that says, we need to talk, they're going to be mad at me? What if when you get the message from the school, you pick up your caller ID and you see the school's calling or you've got to go into parent teacher? What if? And we spend so much energy and time worried about the what if bleeding before we're shot. And sometimes, I dare say a lot more of the time than we think, it turns out to be a positive thing. Like I've been called into the school before because my child has been selected for something or I've got a we need to talk email. I just heard your podcast and I loved it. Or, you know, you have some results and everything's fine. So, and then other times when it isn't shiny and great, it ends up being something that never even imagined could have happened So I'd spent all my time worrying, what if it's this or what if it's this or what if it's this? And it ends up being that. That didn't even enter my radar of worriness. And then I just have something else. So don't bleed before you're shot. What if we we spend so much time, what if? And then from there, we go back to, I should have done this differently. If only I had. We don't know. If you'd made a different decision, if you had gone this way instead of that, if you had followed this path instead of that, would you even be the same person you are today? I love books and TV shows where they explore um, the thread like maybe in another life. I think that was a book by Taylor Jenkins Reid, maybe in another life. And she reached one of those like sliding doors moments where, and it was such a small thing. One, I don't want to give it away in case anyone then goes to read it. But one night she, in one version of her life, she stays on to party. In another version of her life, she goes home. So it seems such a trivial thing, ends up with a completely different life. So when we beat ourselves up and go, if only I did this, especially when it's the result of something like, you know, three years ago, global pandemic. Oh, if only I knew then what I knew now. I don't know many people who were predicting a global freaking pandemic. Sometimes there was no way for you to know it would have panned out this way. Had you made this financial decision? Had you moved to this place? Had you taken that job? Had you married, not married that person? There is no way that you could have known. So this bleeding before your shot, worrying about future consequences of today, and then beating yourself up for past choices 
Another thing, shout out to the Heather Tobin, that she said, and I don't know if it's her original quote, but stayed out to me. It's like, if you've got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, you're pissing on the present. How many of us do that? We're so future focused in the what ifs and, you know, what happens or past focused if coulda, shoulda, woulda. We are missing now. And this for me was highlighted to me a few years ago. My son, Casimir, he's also coming up on a podcast. He wants to speak to you guys about straws. We'll see. <laughs> he, he, he would have been three or four at the time. And I think we're at the park and I had a notification on my phone and I was answering that. He was swinging or playing or something. And he just said off the cuff, you care about your phone more than me. And I was struck. I was like, oh, it was so, it wasn't true. Like as in, of course, my son always, but I could see because I was married to my phone. And then, you know, in business, part of the reason I became a nope coach, I think this story is going to be meted out over the podcast, but, you know, I might one day do a whole episode directed to it is I don't do the DM thing. If you're my friend and you send me DMs of memes or gifts, I'm all for it. But if you want to ask me a question about my business or this or that or the other, because I was always married to my phone, trying to win, trying to say the right thing, trying to, you know, show that I was knowledgeable, trying to um, have social proof and be all this sort of stuff. It reached a point where I was like, nope, I'm good at what I do. I know that. And I get to choose how I conduct business. So I love email. Email me all day long. I don't have email on my phone. It's a deliberate choice. I control when I sit down and open and close my emails and then I'm not at the whims or the mercy of everybody else. So we've gone a little bit all over the place, but this is my show, so (laughs) I can do that. But what are you doing because everybody else told you to do? What are you wasting the precious resource of now with a future focus or a past focus? And are you willing to change and what's it going to take? And if people say to you like, oh, well, you didn't respond to me in five minutes, so you don't care about me and whatever, is that a them problem or a you problem? Because you get to decide the parameters of how you engage and how you respond and what other people make it mean has is, is not your business, has nothing to do with you. I don't respond to DMs. I don't carry out my business in the DMs and I love it that way. And if people want to make that mean that I'm snobby or I don't care or I think they're unimportant or whatever, that's okay. I know the truth in my heart and what lights me up. And spending time worrying about what others will think if I do and when I do respond and whatever is something I'm wholly unavailable for. So don't bleed before you're shot. Take charge of your change. Make the decisions about how you spend your time and how you can value the now. Because now is all we ever have. I remember hearing once, I can't remember who it was from, so I can't quote this one, but time is like, imagine you had a like a piggy bank, a piggy bank dispenser that you remove $5 notes from. You don't know when that's going to run out, when you're not going to have any more. Time is our finite, limited resource that we can't get back. And so if we're wasting that or spending that or investing that in worry, whether it be about the past or the future or about what other people think or about what other people think about what we think about them. That is not a very, it's just not the kind of life I want to lead anymore. Like people pleasing is exhausting as fuck. So reclaim that, reclaim your time and make the most of now. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I welcome any comments on the YouTube or emails, info at suzannekohlberg.com. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.